The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. speak again the immortal tale, The Wooden Ghost. I mean, head down. Look yonder on the road. Wait. What is it, Van Riel? A man hailing us to stop. What shall I do? Where? I don't see a thing but darkness. He may be a highwayman. Do you have your pistol? Oh, yes, I see him now. Uh, stop the carriage, Van Triel. Uh, his man may need help. Now, where did he go? Van Triel, can you see him from your box up there? No, Mijnheer. He, he disappeared. Oh, look, Mijnheer, now. There in the shadows beside the road. A tall man in a cape and wide-brimmed hat. Van Triel, drive on. Coachman, hold the reins. Mijnheer, now, what shall I do? He's coming toward the carriage, Van Triel. Wait. Are you Mainherr Gerard Dow? I am. What do you want? I have been waiting until your return from Rotterdam. You are the uncle and guardian of Rose Falderkost, I believe. Yes. Yes, I am. Tonight, by the clock of the Stathurs... I will call at your studio in Leiden to see you on an urgent matter. Yes, but uh, what urgent matter is it, mein Herr? I will tell you of it then. Here is my card. Expect me at seven. Good evening to you. Good, Good evening. Mein Herr Dow, what kind of a man is he? I could not see his face. Nor could I, Van Triel. It, it was as if he had no face... Oh, the saints protect us. Drive away from here as fast as you can. Get up there. Get up. <laughs> and I'll admit your good uncle is the best teacher in Holland, that without a shadow of doubt I'm his most promising student. But I can't understand how you, Rose Felderkast, can expect anybody to paint a portrait of a man without a face. But, Godfrey, I told you I've never seen his face. Well, then when did you first meet him? Oh, long ago, when I was a little girl. And Uncle Gerard and I lived in Rotterdam. One day we went for a long walk outside the city and ate our lunch on the steps of an ancient house that's fallen to ruin. The statue was there, life-size, in a niche in one of the walls. It was carved of wood. Since that time, I've dreamed of him every birthday. You mean all this is a dream? <laughs> of course. You didn't think he was real, did you? Oh, the saints preserve us. He's a dream. Of course I thought he was real from the way you spoke of him. Well, perhaps he is after all. How else do the gold coins appear so mysteriously on my dresser every birthday? Why, Rose, my darling, I, I really think you believe in this dream ghost or whatever you call him. He wishes me well. He looks over me, brings good luck. Why shouldn't I believe in him? Of course you should if you want to. Uh, Rose, where are you? Here, Uncle Gerard, with Godfrey in the studio. Oh, I thought he wasn't returning till late tonight. Something must have happened. Oh, dear, what a trip. Two hours of being bounced and jostled in one of Van Driel's infernal carriages. I'll never rent another one from him, never. Was it so bad, Uncle Gerard? You do look tired. I do, do I? Well, I am. Oh, now, where's your new frock? Go, put on your new frock, Rose. 
Look pretty for Godfrey and for me this evening. But I was planning to wear it tomorrow on my birthday. Mm, a girl should always look pretty, birthday or not. You run along, Rose. Put it on. <laughs> All right, if you say so. Dinner will be ready before long. Oh, there. She's gone. Godfrey, the most extraordinary thing happened to me on the road to Rotterdam just a little while ago. I, oh, what time is it now? Oh, uh, a little before seven. Oh, we've made it. I had to drive like fury, but we've made it. Godfrey, listen, and I'll tell you what happened. Then he walked away quickly into the darkness. I tell you, my boy, the hair's on my head. Oh, there's the Studhurst clock. Godfrey, don't leave me. You stay here. Face him with me. Of course I will, sir. Oh, oh but the card. What does the card say? Here, read for yourself. You'd better turn up the lamp a little. Yes, sir. Well, how strange. Rizal van der Heusen. Rotterdam, manor house of the Boom Key. Gentlemen. Uh, what? Godfrey! How do you do? Did I startle you? I'm sorry. My appointment was for seven, I believe. Yes, of course, it, it was for seven. Come in, sir. Welcome to my house. Thank you. But I can stay only a few minutes. This young man... Oh, forgive me. He is Godfrey Schalken, a student of mine. Is he to be trusted? Trusted? Oh, indeed. He's a friend as well as a pupil. Then perhaps he will do an errand for us. A matter of fetching a box for my carriage. If Menherr Dahl wishes me to. Indeed I do, Godfrey. Our visitor's wish is mine. It's a small box, resting on the carriage floor. Will you bring it to us? Why, I'll be happy to do so, sir. Now, what can I do for you, sir? You are the guardian of Rose Felderkost, I believe. She is your ward. Yes, that's right. I am prepared to offer her five times the future she has a right to expect from a husband. Well, you, you are asking for the hand of my niece. I don't believe she's acquainted with you. But it is a tempting offer from so fine a gentleman as you. Then it is only necessary to sign the engagement. I have the paper with me. But under the circumstances, well, I, I think it best to consult with my niece about such unexpected business. As you wish, after the engagement is signed. Here, there's ink and quill on the table. But let me call my niece. You I are think... not content. Another day, sir. When I know my ward's inclination... Time is too precious, not another hour. But I do not know if... Write your name to the engagement. Yes, as you say. There. It is done. Speak of this to your ward when I am gone. Tell her the time has come. Tell her she need have no fear that with me she will be safe from harm forever. Say I will return during the first hour of her eighteenth year. Tell her Rosel van der Huysen will watch over her, as he has done from the moment she was born. Yes, I will tell her what you say. Here is the box. It, it's as heavy as a block of lead. Now it is in your hands, Mainherr Dow. Assurance of my promise. Good night. But must you go? Really, my niece... Tell her I will return. Good night. Then, Herr Dow, you, you've gone white with fear. What did that man say to oh, you? Oh, the saints forgive me, Godfrey, for what I've done. What do you mean, sir? What happened? He took the paper with him. Godfrey, call Rose to us quickly. Here I am, Uncle Gerard. All got up in my newest frock. I even pinched my cheeks to make them rosy. Now do I please you oh, both? Rose, my child, I've done a terrible thing. What is it? What happened, Godfrey? Your uncle had a visitor named Rusel van der Heusen. What? Rusel? Such a man was here. And demanded that I sign the paper. An engagement in marriage for you, Rose, and this... This man who says you are acquainted with him, that you'd welcome his proposal. An engagement paper? Rose, did you know anything about this? No, of course I didn't. Rusel isn't a real person. He... He was quite real to your uncle and me. Look what he left. A box full of gold, ancient gold coins. Gold? For oh, me? My... Then it's true, he is real. 
It's my birthday gold, Godfrey, don't you see? Men here now. Let me have that card. Yes, of course, my boy. Here, here it is. I'm going to find out what this is all about before it's too late. Godfrey, where are you going? To Rotterdam. That's where I'm going. To look up this Riesel van der Heusen at the manor house of the Boom Key, wherever that is, and bring back the engagement paper. Godfrey, wait. Oh, what is he doing? Uncle Gerard, stop him. There's no need. No, 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 my child. Let him go. I, for one, will welcome information about this stranger. But didn't this man say who he was? Didn't he ask to see me? No, my dear. And he was gone almost before we knew it. He did say one thing, though. He said to tell you that you need have no fear that he'd return during the first hour of your 18th year. The first hour? Then that's tonight. Five hours from now. Uncle Gerard, tonight. Rose felt a coast. Oh, Oh, who is that in the garden? It is I. Come to you as I said I would. You? You are Rusal? Of course. Don't you recognize me? Yes. The wide hat. The long cape. Just as I used to dream of you on nights before my birthdays. But I don't understand. I... I thought you were a recurring dream. And so I have been. Till now. My... My Uncle Gerard waits for you in his study, and I was waiting here in the garden until he called me in. You didn't see him. We have nothing to say to one another. You and I will set the marriage time. I... Come. We have much to say. I'm afraid, mine here. The fear will go. Take my hand. I cannot leave the garden. But there is much I would show you. And at last the time is now... It has been too long. My carriage waits on the street. Will you take me away? Only to show you wonders. To have you say you love me with an understanding heart. Come. Here is the garden gate. Now, where are you? Oh, Godfrey. Oh, it's you. Oh, thank heaven you've come. The saints preserve us, my boy. We are dealing with a demon, my boy. Rose, where is she? Gone. Gone into the night with that demon stranger. But where? Why didn't you stop her? Oh, I'm an old man. I cannot stand this harrowing business. He returned a short while ago, just after midnight, and then I thought I took precaution. Rose was in the garden, and I waited here for his knock on the door. But he didn't come, and... When I chanced to look out, he was helping Rose into a carriage. And in a moment, they were gone. Which road did they take? Toward Rotterdam. Oh, you must have passed them, surely. Yes, it was one of Andriel's rented carriages speeding along the road. What'll we do? Where has he taken her? To Rotterdam, no doubt. To one of his luxurious houses. Minhead now. This man has no houses. In Rotterdam, there is no such place as the Boom Key. What do you... Why, there must it be... It doesn't exist, I tell you. But what I did find out is enough to make your heart stand still. What, my boy? What did you find out? The manorial records do list the van der Heusens, giving their residence as the manor house of the Boom Key. But Riesel van der Heusen has been dead for three centuries, and the line ended when he died. Menherdau, Rose is engaged in marriage to a dead man. my boy. What did you find out? The manorial records do list the van der Heusens, giving their residence as the manor house of the Boom Key. But Riesel van der Heusen has been dead for three centuries, and the line ended when he died. Menhedau, Rose is engaged in marriage to a dead man. A dead man? But, Godfrey, he was real. He was no ghost. How can you know that, Menhedau? To us, he appeared to be nothing more than a large hat and a flowing black cape. What is underneath them? 
A man or an invisible being? Well, and the gold, Godfrey. The coins are ancient ones, antiques. Even the dates, you see, more than three centuries back. His apparel, too. He wore a costume out of the past. But what shall we do? How do you look for a ghost? I don't know. But we must find them. And Rose, what can this dreadful sympathy be? There's bound to be more to this than we could possibly know. Menhedau, the carriage. It was one of Van Driedel's. I know it was. And this stranger must have rented it. Put on your coat. We're going to find Rose. But how, my boy? What do you intend to do? Van Driel will tell us where he was directed to go. If somewhere there exists a ghost world belonging to this dead man, we'll find it even if it's beyond the common strength of man to do so. Andriel, drive as fast as the darkness will allow you. Are you sure you can find the place? I think I can. It was some miles this side of Rotterdam by a little road that ran next to a canal. And, Patril, did they just disembark in this deserted place on the road? That's right. He said drive until I saw two men standing to one side of the highway. But, Patril, when did this stranger hire your carriage? A little before midnight. I heard a loud knock on my door, and when I opened it, there he stood. What did he say? He said he wanted to hire a carriage. He offered me a whole sack of gold. Naturally, I couldn't refuse that, even if it were a funny time of night. He said he'd meet me in front of your house, man, head out. And you waited there? Until he came out of your garden gate with your niece. So he told you then to drive toward Rotterdam until you saw these men waiting on the side of the road. <clears throat> what were they like? Uh, I really couldn't say, sir. I, I mean, it was very dark. I could only catch a glimpse now and then of their clothes. Looked very old-fashioned, they did, though. I, I think one was a footman and the other a coachman. Yeah, yeah. I saw a very ancient and dilapidated-looking buggy standing on the narrow road that branched off from the highway. But they took this second carriage to where? Oh, don't you see, it is hopeless, my boy. How can we ever trace them? Did he mention where he was going, Van Driel? No, he didn't say a word. But this road, what road is it? Do you know where it goes? Well, if I remember rightly, it runs a few miles over the moors to an old, old house that's fallen to ruin. It's far off the beaten track, and nobody ever goes there. Then that must There's be... There's a name for it, uh, an ancient manor house it is. Called the Boom Key, I think. The Boom Key. Godfrey, it's the very same. Yeah. The Boom Key. Yeah. So that's where it is. Yeah. Ben Hedow, the lady of good luck, rides with us this night. Andriel, take the road to the ruin. To the Boom Key. Yeah. There is nothing to be afraid of, my Rose. We are at home. But let us come another time, mine hair. It's so dark here, and there's lightning in the western sky. I will protect you, even from the lightning. Look, is the manor house of Boom Key to your liking? Boom Key? Is that where you brought me, mine hair? It is our home. And you will be a lady here, with beautiful gowns and servants. Anything you desire. I was here before, long ago. I know. I remember it well. You were a little girl then. But who are you? I don't ever remember seeing you before, except in my dreams. Mein hair, I don't understand. Who are you? I am one who has waited beyond the generations for this night, when you would come to me. But I'm afraid. I don't like it here, mein hair. Take me away back home. Please take me away. I cannot now, my Rose. The risk is too great. Come. There is nothing to fear. Take my hand. No, no. But we have much to say. We must set the wedding day. And I would show you treasures and shower you with precious gifts. The statue. There in the niche. That's where the statue was. You remember it then? It was a statue of myself. Where is it now? Come with me. I will show you. But where would you take me? To the tower. There you can see the splendor of the boom key. All that I offer you. 
for a bit of affection in return, a bit of love in exchange for the outrageous riches of a king. Oh, take me away. Take me back. This is but a ruin. There's nothing here except decay and, and the feel of death. But that's not true. There is beauty here. I have tended it all these years just for you. Then why do you hide from me now behind that cape and hat? Show me your face so that I won't be afraid. Come then, and I will show you. Come with me to the tower. Here are the stairs. The tower stands alone in the ruins. And the stairways open to the sky. But then, will you take me back, mein Herr? My uncle, he will grow alarmed. He's an old man. He loves you, too. How can you love me, whom you have never known, mein Herr? How? It began very long ago. She was as beautiful as you. Limpid brown eyes and dazzling cheeks. And her hair was like the shining ripples of the canal water. But what was her heart like, my rose? It was like a stone on which the frost sits. And she betrayed me. Who? Who was this woman? Look. Here from the tower. The fields of tulips. Stagnant marshes they are. The abbey and the windmills. Piles of musty stones. She would have had it all. But she betrayed me. Who betrayed you so, mein Herr? Oh, my rose. Now you can save me. A man who has never loved. Who can never die till he feels the warmth of a woman's heart. Say you love me now. Say you do. No, no, mein Herr, take me away. Please take me away. But she was your grandmother, four times removed. And I loved her more than I loved my own life. And even as you, her name was Rose. My namesake? She's been dead three centuries, mein Herr. Even as I. <laughs> And when she betrayed me, I stood here in the night time and climbed here to the tower's ledge, oh, and oh. my body dropped from this height to the ground below. Mein Herr. But I could not die. My ghost lived on, hungry and cold for the want of a woman's love, and none will set me free save yours. My, my love. Because you are the first girl child of your line. Since she betrayed me, and I have waited and tended the boom key, and longed for the time when three words from your lips would unbind me from the earth. You are a ghost. You are a dead man. Don't turn away from me. Look. Look at my face. No, no. <coughs> the statue, the wooden statue. It is the only physical being I know. Stand back from me. Is it such a frightful thing? Rose, Rose, say the words that'll send me on my way. Is your heart so empty of a gift of kindness, even as hers? Got me, got me! Below in the cellars of Boom Key are coffers of precious gold, and I offer it all to you for three small me, words. Help me, help me! Rose, look, there she is in the tower. They have come to... Stairway to the tower. You see, it's open to the sky. I have waited three centuries for this night and for you. They shall not take you back. What will you do? My dear, come back. Come back. Godfrey, he's coming down the stairway. He has a sword. Andrew, men head now. Look, there he comes. Stay back. He's brandishing a sword. My hair, I beg of you, do them no harm for my sake. I will say anything you wish, for my heart cries with pity. Is not compassion enough? Then I do love you with grief, my hair, and I would have you free. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, my hair? I love you with sorrow because you are lost, and I would have you free. Look! The lightning struck him and he fell to the ground. The figure burns like kindling. Oh, what a terrible thing to see. Look how straight it lies, like a statue of wood. Rose, Rose, oh, my darling, are you all right? God, I was so frightened, so afraid. But now it's all right. You're safe, and the ghost is destroyed. Look where it burns. 
He was a ghost in a wooden statue, a phantom caught between two worlds and belonging to neither. Come, my child. Let us leave this dreadful place. It's like a tomb here. Now he is dead, Uncle Gerard. When I said the words, did you see? The lightning set him free. Yes, my darling. We saw. And above all, he wanted me to say I loved him. He gave me the riches of a king, Godfrey, just to say I loved him. The carriage is waiting, Minherr Dow. We're coming, Van Drew. And he meant no harm, Godfrey, for his heart was full of kindness. He was lost. He had no place to go. And the sword, the sword was only a wooden one, after all. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, The Wooden Ghost. Bellkeeper, toll the bell.